Well, good morning, EdTPA world. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to start today the second in the series uh, that I began on subject-specific emphasis. And uh, um, I'm going to give a little background uh, knowledge if, if this is the first one that you've watched. Uh, however, I do think that you should go back to the beginning of the playlist and start there. Um, but today what we'll be focusing on is how to use the subject-specific emphasis um, to understand the EdTPA. Um, so generally, the biggest question I get is, what is the SSE? And um, the SSE is, is really just an abbreviation for um, what I refer to as the subject-specific emphasis of um, your handbook. So every single handbook on the EdTPA um, begins with um, a description um, of, uh, and it's in your handbook's introduction. So they describe the subject-specific em uh, emphasis. This is in the introduction of your own handbook. And that's really the best place to go. Um, however, if you don't know what you're looking for, it's kind of hard to find. So here's an example taken from the secondary ed history one. And you can see um, this bulleted list on rubric one. So we've got concepts, inquiry, interpretations or analysis, building arguments and conclusions. So in my videos, whenever I refer to the first SSE, the second and the third, I'm thinking this is the first, this is the second, this is the third. Some of you don't have three, <clears throat> but um, that's, that is what I mean. So uh, if you'll go and you'll look on rubric one, it's usually around page 13, 15 or so of your own handbook. If you'll take a look at that now, uh, you can see. Um, if you're looking in your handbook uh, around page 13 or so, also you'll see the overview of the assessment. This is where you can find a description of the subject specific emphasis. It's almost always based on um, some sort of national standards. Uh, those are very different depending on, of course, what your content is, correct? Uh, here is where they describe um, that uh, in an early childhood handbook that you should be um, thinking about these things in planning your lesson. Um, this is uh, English language arts for secondary, uh, the standards that they're using, and the subject-specific emphasis. Um, this one is for... Um, special ed, uh, their emphasis. So everybody's got uh, got their own emphasis. Um, I, I did make uh, a handout that I give my students um, that has all of them. Uh, this goes along with the lesson plan template. Um, notice that there is one for everyone. We just recently updated the school librarian one. Uh, elementary literacy, I'll point it out as having one that's a little different because uh, whereas with it, most people, it's something specific like math is, um, is always conceptual understanding, procedural fluency, mathematical reasoning, and or problem solving. Um, that's always there in any math, whether it's middle grade, secondary ed, or elementary. Those three things are there. But if you look at literacy, it's 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 not it's a little more vague. And so with literacy, what they have to do is that they have to really kind of come up with their own. So um, they have to come up with the essential literacy strategy that they're teaching and the related skills. They need to choose at least one related skill, essential literacy strategy, and at least one related skill. Sometimes there's more than one. There might be two related skills. Those would be their SSE. So they actually pick their own. Um, if you are elementary literacy, you need to be using your understanding rubric level progressions, the ERLP. Look on page 48 to 54 and find um, the uh, Appendix A. And it tells you what all are examples of essential literacy strategies and related skills. SPED, you all have got a, a little something different. Um, I don't focus on SPED in my uh, 
in my teaching, um, but I do uh, have students at my college that are doing this handbook. Um, so I try to be helpful, but I'm not quite as knowledgeable with that, and I admit that. But I will say that special education, they have three things. One is to support um, the lear learner. Um, to access the content to the learning goal, demonstrate their learning, uh, they're to align at least one goal of the IEP um, to any kind of relevant uh, academic or non-academic standards, and they are to reflect um, IEP identified adaptations with their environment, the content, the strategies, and the assessments. In other words, they need to support, they need alignment, and they need adaptations. Very important to note that when you are, when candidates begin writing their lesson plans, they need to think about their <clears throat> SSE first. They know, need to know what their SSE is. And um, those of you who are faculty members uh, supporting candidates, I encourage you to draw attention to your subject-specific emphasis for your students first. That's a starting place, not something you add in later. Now, I can't tell you how important this is, um, and I, <laughs> I wish people would listen to me, uh, but it makes all the difference in the world when you have them plan um, around the SSE. They need to teach all the SSE. They need to support learners. Uh, with their, uh, in regards to the SSE, and then they'll eventually need to assess the SSE. So, <clears throat> um, this is the first prompt. Uh, everybody's prompt is about, uh, they might, it might say central focus, it might say something different up here, but generally prompt one of task one planning commentary uh, is a question uh, where where the candidate is going to describe their learning segment, the goals, the learning competencies, uh, objectives. Uh, they're going to they're going to describe the segment, its purpose. Most of the time, uh, candidates are asked to describe a central focus um, and the purpose of the content. Um, they if they just as an aside, you may you may find that they need to a little help with that word right there. <laughs> but then they have to talk about how their central focus and their standards and their objectives that they've planned aligns with their SSE. So from the very beginning of the commentary, they have to, to defend how their standards and their objectives are supporting their SSE. Now, every lesson in the learning segment doesn't have to have the SSE, but the SSE needs to be apparent within that segment. And they also are going to need to talk about how that SSE is built upon and how it flows from uh, lesson to lesson in the learning segment. That's We know that from looking at the rubric. So rubric one, um, Actually, in this situation, rubric one of, of the ATPA does, is used to assess prompt one. That's not always the case, unfortunately. Uh, if there was a little bit more alignment there, that, that would be beneficial to students. Um, but uh, notice that not only are they having to make connections when describing their learning segment, they have to make connections not just to how the lessons are connected, but how the lessons build on the SSE. And so you can't really even get um, a, a, a three without uh, having, you know, good connections. Matter of fact, if you don't talk about your SSE uh, in uh, the prompt one, you're going to get a, a level one. So it's very important. This is PE, um, and their SSE, it's always there. Here it's um, their 
that they uh, their plans are to support the development of psychomotor competencies. So each each level, and then at two, it's um, limited. So you you've got to at least talk about it, even if it's limited. You <laughs> that's the only way you can you can score anything. It has to be there. So again, it just cannot be it cannot be ignored. Students need to know what the SSE is. Um, it appears again. This is the uh, SPED one. All right. So now in the planning commentary, you do a lot of things. Um, you you start out with describing your learning segment. Then you get into um, talking about the supports that you've put in uh, for your students, uh, both for all of their differing learning needs and then their language needs. All of that's from prompts two, three, and four. But when you get to prompt five, everybody, no matter what your handbook, unless you're world language and it's not prompt five, it's prompt four, but everybody in that final prompt, whether it's four or five, is going to be talking about assessments. And here, um, you have to describe a variety of assessments, but that's not enough. This variety of assessments, um, they, you have to plan, uh, you have to describe how you have planned to assess all of the different SSE. So this is a math one, and you can see that there has to be within the learning segment um, planned formal and informal assessments that give evidence of conceptual understanding, procedural fluency, mathematical reasoning, and this has to be throughout the segment. So this is a, it is very big. So if they're planning on teaching it, which they describe in prompt one, then they plan on assessing it, which is described in prompt five. Uh, again, you'll see this in, um, so um, this, you can see here, this is early childhood. Describe how you planned uh, formal and informal assessments through, um, throughout the learning segment. Um, also, one of the things to remember is that uh, with this one, you also be ha you have to be keeping in mind um, the variety of learners. Uh, this is from the root. This is the rubric five. This is from the math one. Uh, here, you have to provide. You have you can't even score a two. You can't even score a two unless you're addressing conceptual understanding procedural fluency, mathematical reasoning, all three of your SSE, here it's limited evidence. If you've got no evidence of having done this, you're not even going to score a two. So I just, again, it is just so important that students, uh, our candidates understand um, how, what their SSE is, that they think about creating uh, learning objectives, for those and that they create assessments for them from the start. It's just everywhere. Uh, this is again the early childhood one. It's at two, three. Uh, this is the, um, this one is the SPED and theirs is all the way through theirs too. It is just everywhere. So what is next? Um, one of the things about planning for uh, the ed tpa is that it's not as linear as we we'd like for it to be uh, a student needs to really read their entire handbook um, all of your teacher candidates need to be familiar with what's coming up in task two and task three in order to uh, create a learning segment that's going to give them the evidence they need for task two and three right so as they're planning when they're writing, they're doing their planning commentary, they really need to know what they need to plan for. What kind of evidence do they need to capture on video? And so it's very important that you go to uh, task two and uh, that you look to see candidates what it is that is needed 
especially from rubrics 7, 8, and 9. And uh, so this will help you plan. And um, really and truly, it's not all that hard. You just need to know what you're doing, kind of have a, a, a plan in mind. And you can really, you can do this. I know that you can. Um, I will be seeing you soon with the one on task two.